fists were coming at me from both sides now. I was bouncing back and forth like a ping-pong ball. The room was starting to spin. I swung wildly a couple of times, got nothing but air. Then something hard smashed into the side of my head, and I went down on my knees. I tried to get up, but a size 13 shoe connected with my chin, and then all the lights went out. <laughs> New Adventures of Michael Shane, Private Detective. Michael Shane, reckless, red-headed Irishman, is back again in his old haunts in New Orleans. This is your director, Bill Russo, inviting you to listen to another transcribed episode, which we call The Case of the Deadly Dove. Come in. Come in. Hmm. Must be hard to hear. What's the matter, didn't you? Shh. Huh? Okay. Hey, hey, look. Why the hush-hush routine? Thought I heard a noise down the hall. Noise? So what? So maybe I was being followed. Fo- now look, little man. Let's start from page one. Who would... You, Mike Shane? Yeah, who are you? They call me Wichita. Who's they? Skip it. I got a job for you, Shane. You know, that's the first thing you said that makes sense. I'll give it to you fast. I haven't got much time. Here. What's that, the key to the city? The key to a baggage locker down at the Canal Street Station. You'll find a little black suitcase in it. Take it to this address on Bienville Street in the French Quarter. It's an empty room. Leave the suitcase in the room and come back here. Well, go on. What else? That's all. You mean all I do is pick up a suitcase and take it to an empty room in the quarter? You catch on quick. There's a chance you might be followed. If so, shake them at the depot, huh? I'll wait here in your office and pay you when you come back. That sounds simple enough. It is. So simple, I'm wondering what the hook is. It's no hook. And why you don't pick up the bag yourself? Look, Shane, I got 50 bucks waiting for you. Does that answer all your questions? Yeah, I guess it does. 50 bucks just for doing what you said, huh? 50 bucks. But it's worth it to me, Shane. <laughs> Believe me. I left Wichita sitting in my desk chair and went down to the Canal Street Station. It was right. I was followed for a while, but I didn't get a decent look at the guy. Anyway, I shook him before I got to the depot. I looked up locker number 1245, the number on the key. Suitcase was in it, all right. A small one. Bienville Street, where I was supposed to leave the suitcase, was only a couple of blocks away, so I walked. I hadn't been in the French Quarter for about a month... But it hadn't changed. It never changed. I could hear one of the last chimney sweeps in existence giving his pitch. Pretty soon I spotted him carrying a bunch of straw on a rope, looking very dignified and very dirty. I was in front of a grocery store now, and almost at the address Wichita had given me. I stopped and looked around again to make sure I'd shaken the guy who'd been tailing me. Then all of a sudden there was something hurtling down through the air at me. I dove for the street just in time. A tin bucket tied to a rope. Another custom in the quarter. I looked up. Sure enough, on a third story balcony was a worried housewife. Please excuse me, sir. I didn't answer you. I wanted to go, sir. <laughs> okay. What did you want? It's got some soap powder. <laughs> okay. Joe, a lady wants some soap powder. And Joe came bustling out of his store and plunked a box of soap powder in the bucket, which the woman hauled up to her balcony. Efficiency. Well, the rest of the trip was uneventful. I found the room. It was empty. I left the suitcase there and went back to my office. Well, what's it, uh, Just about the easiest 50 I... He was still sitting in my chair, his head over to one side. There was a split-lipped grin on his battered face. Wichita had been beat up. There must have been quite a beating. Because he was very dead. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Mike Shane and the case of the deadly doe. Well, maybe someday I'll learn that easy money always carries a hook. The easy money in this case was the 50 bucks a little character named Wichita offered me to go down to the depot, pick up a small suitcase, and leave it in an empty room in the quarter. Yeah, that was the easy money. 
But the hook was coming back to my office and finding Wichita dead. And it had happened very recently. I turned and started from my office door to take a look outside. Now, hurry, Shane. Uh, Inspector Lefevre. Take a look around, Dyke. Okay. Been entertaining, Shane? Yeah, I was holding open house. He decided he wanted two lumps with his teeth. Now, look, Lefevre, this is one you couldn't pin on me with an ice pick. Am I trying? You will. Yeah. Customer yours, Shane? Why? It's Wichita, all right, Inspector. Mm -hmm. Hey, wait a minute. You know this guy? Wichita. I used to have a sort of a speaking acquaintance with him. But it was always pretty one-sided. Well, who is he? What is he? Shane, you ever heard of a guy named Dan Bascom? Dan Bascom? Name's sort of familiar, but I can't... Happened a long time ago, 31. Dan Bascom held up a bank in Baton Rouge. Big job. Almost 100 grand in currency. Well, what's that got to do with... We always thought there was another guy in on the job with Bascom. Ed Ferris. We could never pin anything on Ed. We had enough on Bascom to send him up in 32 for 20 years. So you got a good memory, Lefevre. I still don't... There's only one little thing wrong with the case, Shane. We could never get Bascom to tell what he... Oh. That makes a dent, huh? Why should it? Uh, Maybe this other guy, what's his name, Ed Ferris, got the dough. That I doubt. I think it's still floating around somewhere. Well, where did Wichita fit into the deal? He was an old friend of Dan Bascom's. You see, Dan got some time off for good behavior. It was released last Friday. and just sort of dropped out of sight right away. You think Wichita had the dough? I think Bascom told Wichita where to find the dough, told him to get it and bring it to him. Yeah, that's an interesting theory, Lefebvre. Where does it get you? It gets me around to you, Shane. What did Wichita want you to do? Run an errand. That's all you want to say, huh? Right now? Yeah. Okay. But I think you're making a mistake. You'll be bucking big league opposition in this deal, Shane. So? So Wichita here got hit by a pitched ball could happen to you. Maybe Wichita is standing too close to the plate. Maybe. Just one more thing. Yeah, I know. Don't leave town. Yeah. Inspector, you keep telling me that. I never do, do I? A couple of minutes more and they finished up and took Wichita away. I could hardly wait till they left. Because I had just two things on my mind. One was the little black suitcase I'd taken to that room on Bienville Street. The other was what was in that suitcase and the reward that'd be for it. I sat there a few minutes after Lafayette had gone, and then I started for the door. This must have been open house day after all. Standing outside my door, the worried look on her face was a very pretty woman. She must have been in her late 30s, but she hadn't lost a thing. Mr. Shane, could I talk to you a minute? Ordinarily, there's nothing I'd like better, lady, but right now I'm in a hurry. Maybe you could come back a little... Please, I'm Zoe Bascom. Huh? Dan Bascom's wife. Oh. Come in. Thank you. Now, now what's this? Mr. Shane, where's Dan? How would I know? I don't know. I thought you might. I knew Wichita came here to see you, and I thought... Wichita's dead. Dead? Yeah. Murdered. Then I'm right. The trouble's starting all over again. Mr. Shane, you've got to find Dan and make him give up this whole thing. Now, look, I think you better start at the beginning, Mrs. Bascom. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Shane. I just... I know I shouldn't get so upset. It's... Except it's... Just that I've been waiting for 16 years. And now it'll start all over again. What'll start? I married Dan just before he was arrested. All this time I've stuck by him. All this time, 16 years. Yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. Yet when you love someone... Time isn't so important. Yeah. I went to see Dan so often as they let me, and each time I tried to get him to give up the money because I thought they might let him out sooner if he did. He paid the price for taking that money, Mr. Shane, 16 years out of his life. I wanted for us to start over again when he got out. Without that awful thing over his head. He, he wouldn't listen to me. He wouldn't ever listen to me. Oh, look, I... I... Guys, I, I haven't even seen him. I... I don't know where he is, except he's probably after that money. He said he'd get in touch with me later. Mr. Shane, it'll start all over again. I know it. The trouble, the fear that that money's toted with it. I just I can't stand that I couldn't go through it again. I just couldn't. Look, Mrs. Bascom, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can get your husband to give up the money. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Shane. Well, I guess the thought of that woman waiting 16 years for her husband sort of rocked me back a little. And anyway, it occurred to me that she and I both wanted the same thing, to get the dough away from Bascom, although for slightly different reasons. 
She left after that, and I hot-footed it back to the room on Bienville Street. The suitcase was still sitting on the table where I'd left it. I started toward it. Then I stopped. Don't move, mister. Don't look around. Okay. Who are you? Shane. Michael Shane. Oh, the boy Wichita hired him. Wichita? You might be Dan Bascom? Yeah, I'm Dan Bascom. The one guy you don't want to see, Shane. But I'm awfully glad to see you. What are you talking about? Got any particular prayer you're fond of? Prayer? Start on it. You're going to die pretty soon. Look, what is this? You mind telling me just why? Because I've been through too much to miss out now. To be double-crossed by some two-bit punk of a private eye. Double-crossed? I don't know what you're talking about. Open that suitcase. Huh? I said open it. Okay. What? Yeah. It's... It's empty. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Mike Shane and the case of the deadly doe. It all started when a little character named Wichita offered me 50 bucks to pick up a black suitcase at the depot and leave it in an empty room on Bienville Street in the French Quarter. I did, and came back to my office to collect the 50 from him. But Wichita wasn't in a position to pay off anymore. He'd been beaten to death. Inspector Lefevre came in about then and told me Wichita was a friend of Dan Bascom, who'd just been released from prison after serving 16 years for a $100,000 bank robbery back in 1931. It seems Dan had never told anyone where the dough was. Of course, about that time, I had my ideas, most of which concerned that little black suitcase. So I went back over to the room on Bienville Street. But this time, it wasn't empty. Dan Bascom was in it with a gun. Shane, you got just one chance to go on living. Tell me where that dough is. Oh, look, I tell you, I don't know anything about it, Bascom. Shane, I've waited 16 years. Five minutes more is too much. What'd you do with the dough? Oh, get smart, Bascom. If I'd taken the dough, do you think I'd have come back here to this room? Either somebody came in and emptied the suitcase after I left it here, or it was empty when I brought it. Matter of fact, I, I remember thinking it felt a little light when I picked it up down at the depot. My, I guess what you say adds up, Shane. You'd have been a dope to come back here again if you'd taken it. Uh, you'd take a lot of convincing, Bascom. So, it turns out the one guy I thought I could trust crosses me. You mean Wichita? You think he took it? Yeah. Is that why you killed him? Huh? Wichita got knocked off a couple of hours ago. You could have done it. A couple of hours ago, I thought Wichita was my friend. Uh, I didn't kill him, but I got a pretty good idea who did. Who? Oh. Never mind, Shane. I'll handle this my way. Now, look, Bascom. Your wife came to see me just before I came over here. Zoe? Why? She wants you to forget the dough. It spells trouble to her. It always has. Uh, Zoe's a good kid, Shane, but she's been trying to tout me off that dough all these years. I've never taken her advice, and I'm sure not going to take it from you. Well, Bascom, I guess I didn't really think you would. Yeah, yeah, Zoe means well. When I wind up a couple of odds and ends and get the money, I'll get her and we'll get out of the country. And I think after a while, she'll get used to the idea of us having dough. Might even quit spelling trouble to her. Well, you're a lucky guy, Shane. Lucky? Yeah, yeah. You're going to walk out of here alive. So, start walking. <laughs> Well, I was glad to oblige. I went downstairs and out on the sidewalk. It was just getting dark. I started walking. I was wondering what Dan Bascom was going to do next. My guess was he was going to head for Ed Ferris, the guy who'd been in on the robbery with him, but who'd beaten the rap. And then a couple of minutes later, a stocky gent fell in step beside me. Got a light, Mac? A light? Well, yeah, I think so. Hey. Know what that is in your ribs? Yeah, it's a police positive 38 with a silencer. Smart boy. What's the idea? See that car across the street with a big eye behind a wheel? Yeah, why? Well, let's head for it. Three of us are going to take a little ride. Where to? Oh, now you don't want me to spoil the surprise, do you? Come on, get moving. We drove across town and pulled up beside the service entrance to an apartment house. 
The two muscle men hustled me up the back stairs into one of the apartments. There was a guy sitting there looking out the window. A pretty trim-looking individual with a very innocent face, except for the eyes. Those I think he must have borrowed from a rattlesnake. Here he is, Ed. Okay. Ed, huh? Ed Ferris, maybe. Maybe. Do you mind telling me why these two gentlemen's gentlemen of yours gave me the rush up here? You know why, Shane. Where is it? Where's what? The doll that owed the hundred grand, where is it? Funny, Ferris, I was just getting ready to ask you that. The worst you get, you're lucky. Now, let's not clown around. Ed, you want Rock on me to muster them up? Not yet, Al. Look, Shane. I don't know where that doll is. Shane! That's straight! The way I got it figured, you or your trained seals here knocked off Wichita and got the dough from here. It'd be awfully hard to prove about who killed Wichita, I mean. As far as my having the dough, I haven't. But I'm going to get it because you're going to tell me where it is right now. Look, how can I tell you if I don't know? Just to refresh your memory, Shane. Al here followed you from your office when you went down to the depot. Uh. But he lost you. I think Wichita ought to be there. The dough. But the suitcase was empty. Yeah, sure. Well, look, what, why don't you get Dan Bascom to tell you? I think he's looking for you. Oh, very funny. If Dan's looking for me, he doesn't tell me where the dough is. Anyway, it'll take him some time to find me. It'll be too late. I'll have the dough by then. Because, like I say, you're going to tell me what you did with it. Look, for the 14th time, I don't know Shane, where... you don't seem to understand. I waited a long time to find out where that dough is. Never could get Dan to tell me. Half that dough is mine. I've waited so long, I just figure now that all of it's mine. So don't try to stall anymore. You're the one who doesn't understand. Can't you get it through your head? I don't know where the money is. Okay, Al. Rocco. Start now. Oh, I'll drive her right to the big eight. Rocco cut me under the ear and drove me back against the wall. I tried one of my own on him. He only blinked his eyes. They both came at me now, and they were one too many. This started coming at me from both sides. Pretty soon I was bouncing back and forth like a ping-pong ball. The room was starting to spin. I, I kept swinging, but was getting nothing but air. And then something hard smashed on the side of my head. I went down on my knees. I tried to get up, but a size 13 shoe connected with my chin, and all the lights went out. About two months later, it seemed like, the darkness started to fade a little. I started wishing it wouldn't, because I felt like one big bruise. Then I could make out that I was lying outside in an alley. There was someone bending over me. Hmm. Still alive, huh, Shane? Am I? How can you tell, Inspector? Well, you're lucky. Sure. Well, cheer up. You might have solved the murder for me. The hard way. Yeah? Look, if I'm in line for a medal, I'll trade it for an ice bag. Who's murder? Wichita. You're carrying the same trademarks on your face he had. Only I guess you're a little more rugged than he was. Oh, three cheers for me. It was those two trained seals of Ed Ferris's. Yeah. Al and Rocco. We got a net out for him. It won't be long. We're also looking for Ed Ferris. Try his apartment. I just had a delightful evening there. We did. It's empty. But we'll get him before long. Well, looks like that's the case, Shane. Ferris had his boys knock off Wichita trying to get Bascom's dough. They didn't get it. They tried you next. Well, then they still don't have it, Inspector. You don't have the dough? No. Are you sure? What do you want? An affidavit? I said no. Okay. Jay, like I told you, you're bucking big league competition. You're lucky you just got struck out. Drop it now while you're still breathing. You know, La Fever, for once I'm agreeing with everything you say. I am going to get out. I'm beat. I dragged myself back to my office and took a look in the mirror over the washboard. I could have sold what I saw in that mirror for four bits a pound at any meat market. I patched myself up a little and slumped down in my chair. And then it occurred to me that this was the way Wichita had been slumped over in that same chair. And I know a little of how he must have felt just before he... Then I saw it. A little shiny metal thing wedged into a crack on the inside of my desk down low. I pulled it out. It was another baggage locker key. It was like a shot in the arm. Suddenly I felt almost alive again. I went back to the depot and found locker 1247, the number on the key. Yeah, there was another suitcase in this one. I opened it just a crack. It was full of dough. 
And as I stared at it, I couldn't help feeling just a little sorry for Dan Bascom. Then I closed the suitcase, started out with it, but I didn't get far. Hello, Shane. Harris. Yeah, keep walking. Now, look, I... Lefeva picked up my boy, so it looks like I'll have to do my own work from now on. You know, Shane, you almost had me fooled. I didn't think anyone could take a beating like that and still not talk. Look, you won't believe this, Ferris, but I didn't know where the door was then. Where are we going? The car outside. You're going to drive, I'm going to sit beside you. Head for Claiborne Avenue and out of town, I'll direct you. We're going out into the country. Ferris wasn't kidding. He went way out in the country. After a while, he motioned me onto a side road. Pretty soon, we pulled up in front of a little house standing all by itself in a clump of trees. There was a light in the window. We got out of the car and went into the house. Standing there in the front Can't room... you fool? Why'd you bring him here? Well, well, Zoe Bascom, the loyal you wife. Oh, you of all the places There's nowhere go. else for me to go, Zoe. They're looking for me in town. Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. We've got the dough right here in this suitcase. You got the money. Right here in this suitcase, Zoe. Wait, it lays. What about Dan? Will you He's quit liable... worrying about Dan? Time he figures out about us and we've got the money, we'll be long gone. Don't be too sure of that, Ed. Dan! Drop it, Ed. Drop the gun. That's fine. Now, look, Bascom... Shut up, Shane. I'll get to you later. Now, just stand there real quiet, the three of you. I got a couple of things to say before I start shooting. In a moment, we'll be back with a thrilling climax to tonight's Michael Shane adventure. Dan Bascom with a gun in his hand and murder in his eyes. Zoe white-faced, nervously rubbing our hands together. Ed Ferris with a sickly grin and me with no grin but sick. So all this time, Zoe, it's been you and Ed. All this time. No, Dan, it's not. I swear, Dan, it's not true. You got it all wrong. You got the wrong idea, Dan. Shut up. I... You're going to die, both of you. No. Dan, I know. Don't be a fool, Bascom. You don't know what Get you're... Get your head away from that gun. You don't stand up. <laughs> Ed. Ed. No more, Ed, Zoe. Tough. No more boyfriend. No more Ed. Sure it was Ed and me. Ed and me all the time. All the time just waiting to get our hands on that money. Sure, what did you think? That I was waiting for you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. You fool. Ed and me. The money was going to be ours. I loved him. And you killed him, you fool, fool, fool! She stood there with her eyes blazing, and I saw his lips twitch and his fingers start to tighten on the trigger. I dove for him, but he was too quick. He clipped me with a gun barrel, and I went down. Then I heard the gun go off. I twisted my head around. Zoe was sagging slowly to the floor, but her expression never changed. Hatred. Pure, venomous hatred. Dan stared hard at her for a moment, and then he looked down at me. You lied to me, Shane. You had the dough all along. You're next. Now, wait a minute, Bascom. I, I didn't have the dough. It was in another baggage locker. I guess Wichita knew he was being followed by Farris's boy, so he figured out a way to throw him off. And what do you mean? He sent me after an empty suitcase as a blind. Then I guess he was going to get the real one later and bring it to you. When he saw Farris's boys coming after him in my office, he slipped the second key down into a crack in my desk. I found it there just an hour ago. So, Wichita really was on the level with me. Well, it's something to know, I guess. I had one friend. Hey, you paid an awful big price to find that out, Bascom. Yeah, I paid big. Sixteen years locked up, a wife who turned rat, and this is what I got for it. A suitcase with a hundred grand. Not too hard a bargain. Yeah, it's worse than that. But better than nothing. No, it isn't, Bascom. What do you mean? What you got is nothing. Shane, you trying to tell me the dough isn't in that suitcase? Oh, it's there, all right. Take a look at it. Hey, what are you trying? Go ahead. Yeah. Take a good look. I've forgotten. You robbed that bank in 1931, Bascom. They were still using the old large size bills in those days. Well, I... You'd forgotten about that. A couple of years later, they changed the size of the currency. Started printing smaller size bills. Well, 
Then the stuff here, it's... You'd have just about as much luck passing Confederate, though, Bascom. He just stood there, stunned, like a pulled steer. For a moment, his guard was down. I knew this was my chance. I lunged for him, and this time I didn't miss. His gun went flying, and he crumpled over on the floor and lay still. I started for the phone to call Inspector Lefebvre, but just then he walked in the door. Bodies, bodies, all the time, bodies. Yeah. Only one of them will come to in a couple of minutes. You can get the story from him. I'll be all ears. I know. Now, look, just one more thing. Yeah. Okay, if I leave town now. This is your director, Bill Russo, again. Our story is based on characters created by Brett Halliday. The music is composed and conducted by John Duffy, and Michael Shane is portrayed by Jeff Chandler. The New Adventures of Michael Shane is a Don W. Sharp production, transcribed in Hollywood and distributed exclusively by the Broadcasters Guild. 